Hello Booktube, I'm Peg and welcome to my channel. I am on my porch now, but I'm not going to be here for very long. It's sweltering already, as I know it is, and it seems like all over the world. I even heard Dave in over in uh, England complaining about the heat. Um, anyway, so I'm here uh, with several reports. First of all, I was going to show you my Brattle Bookshop mug. Uh, which I forgot to show that I got when I went visited Steve and met him there and I just dropped it and broke off the handle. Oh, that's not a good, that's not a good start. I could still drink coffee out of it though. Okay, anyway, so uh, at, on my last uh, video I was complaining about uh, all of a sudden I couldn't see, I was seeing double and the uh, uh, ophthalmologist decided I need some sort of prisms in my in my glasses so they would work together and uh, just yesterday they called and they were there I guess it takes a long time to put in prisms and they work great and they're kind of red I thought they'd be brighter red but they're okay they work great but I can't do anything but read with them because it's so totally focused and puts my all of a sudden I'm not seeing double and I'm not seeing the whole page at the same time I'm only seeing the one word that I'm concentrated on them I can see now why my eyes got so tired before but I'm not wearing them now because I can't see anything else like looks like a big blur blur the so anyway but I got my glasses as soon as it's finished I'm gonna sit by the air conditioner and read for the next four days okay so let's see um, so the last 10 days or whatever I haven't really been able to read because once that happened I just was so conscious of seeing double and seeing the whole page at a time and not my eyes not working together that the only way I could read was to close one eye and I couldn't really not read at all that's just awful so I allow myself a little time every day where I shut one eye and I could see with the other eye to read. So what I, I read is I had uh, planned this suitable boy for my for the tome topple. Well, there's no way I was going to be reading enough of it. It's a huge book, 1,500 pages uh, to finish. But I did. I was able to uh, read a little bit every day on it. And I have to tell you, it's a perfect book to read a little bit at a time. Uh, one of my subscribers, when I first mentioned reading it, said she was uh, taking all year to read it a little at a time. I thought, huh? But I have to say, she was right. It really lends itself to that because it's a huge cast of characters and really short, really short chapters and actually almost works like a series, soap opera series. Uh, something distinct happens in each chapter uh, and it, kind of an end I mean although there is a, of course an over overbearing arc of, of who the suitable boy they're gonna find to marry off the young lady in the Indian family but it's just tremendous so what I've done I read a couple chapters every day and um, in order to keep I don't want to lose my place in order to kind of keep it in line there's so many many characters I, I've written down each character when they come in and and uh, who they are and what page they come in on so that when I go back to read again I can quickly review the characters and what just happened uh, so I don't uh, forget and in uh, the front of the book actually has a complete family tree uh, <laughs> that you can always refer back to there's a, also actually four Indian families in it that intermix and intermingle and uh, so that's a lot of people. Okay, so I'm enjoying that. I'll probably be reading that all summer. I uh, had a, another idea of something I, I wanted to read when I uh, saw Conrad's um, video the other day. He talked about Helen De DeWitt. I believe he had just finished The Last Samurai, which I had been meaning to read for a long time. Helen DeWitt is kind of a... Uh, well known in literature circles but not all that popular uh this was her she she's i i guess a one of those minds renaissance minds that understands all things supposedly she understands higher math she speaks like eight or ten languages uh higher computer programming she can do just one of those really knowledgeable persons people and um this last samurai became a cult classic um, 
it's very long to maybe the next tome topple I'll read yet. But uh, uh, Conrad of Seven Days at Sea gave a real good talk about it and what he liked about it. And I remembered she had just um, put published many years later a short story, a book of 13 short stories called Some Trick. And I thought, well, maybe I could close one eye and read some short stories. So I've read like the first three of these and they are really different. I hope somebody out there is familiar with Helen DeWitt and tell me what you think. Um, the short stories are not, well, I have to read them several times uh, to really get them and they're uh, uh, just finely crafted, you can tell and about strange things. The first one uh, was about an artist, a woman artist in New York City who was living in a loft, you know, and about to be kicked out of her loft. She just couldn't make her uh, make a living with um, her artwork. So she uh, gets this really strange commission that will make her a lot of money. Uh, and it's the rest of it is how she fulfills this strange commission that takes her all over the world and uh, interesting, I should say. The second one is, and the author even writes a side note, that there aren't any short stories about how mathematicians think. And the whole story is told from the, uh, from the, whoops, there it went. Oh, oh, come on, come back. Um, <laughs> is told from the view of a, mathematician or, or statistician really is a lot about statistics and um, what he's thinking as he's trying to explain to a friend who couldn't care less um, it's well done and I have to tell you I I really like it because a dirty little secret about me is I used to be a math teacher before I became an engineer which also has a lot of math in it and I really I I, I just do math it's one of those things that I couldn't teach it because I don't think it seems to me like it's something you either get or you don't get. Um, so, uh, but I, I'm just as bad in things people would, that I thought was cool when I went to college. Math wasn't cool then. So I tried to take philosophy. I thought that would be the cool thing to take. And I just cannot understand philosophy at all. It's just like Greek to me. So I, I, whatever, however my brain works, it's on the mathematical side, not the not the philosophical side, side, but I do love reading books. So anyway, uh, but I would love it also if somebody would do a read along or, or oh, well, I don't know about read along, but just if anybody's tried this or has any thoughts on, on Helen DeWitt, uh, please let me know. Okay, so uh, the, I'm saving my knitting uh, stories till the end in case somebody's not interested in those, they can turn it off. But I have to tell you, I all this two weeks and not being able to read, I was able to knit. And actually I'd made this top before. You can see it's knit in kind of a pattern and multicolors. And a lot of people think of knitting as, you know, wool, wool sweaters and hot. But this is actually made out of a yarn. Um, the yarn changes colors kind of, so I didn't have to use a lot of different colors. Um, the, the yarn changes colors and it's, made out of cotton and linen. And as you can see, there's kind of holes, it's called a lace look in it. You have to wear underwear with it. Um, <laughs> but it's really cooler than like a t-shirt would be. Uh, so I'll be wearing it if I go out today. And uh, one other thing I wanted to tell you about, uh, as you know, I'm making a rainbow uh, wedding blanket for Sean and Kenji for their wedding and planning to go to the wedding. I've got all my, uh, flight set up at my hotel. It's just going to be a fun time. I, and I wanted to, I usually make my clothes uh, in addition to my knitted uh, things. And I wanted to make something that had, sort of had a rainbow look to it. So I saw this shawl, which is crocheted. Uh, and I've and I'm working on a shawl like that. Wouldn't you call that a rainbow shawl? Yeah. And um, the question I have is, should I wear an orange dress under it? Is that going to be too bright? I don't want to blind Sean and Kenji. Um, and also, I don't have long blonde hair. I'm 20 years old, so it might be just too much for me. So I'm going to finish this, finish it up and make several dre dresses in different colors to wear under it. 
And next week, I'm going to have you all vote on what color dress looks be best under my rainbow shawl. So I'll be working on that too. Okay, I'm going to go in the house and read all day, maybe all weekend. So I uh, hope you all are, are having a happy, uh, for you Americans, a day off tomorrow of reading. And uh, everybody have a weekend's not too far away. Anyway, okay, bye.